Elon Musk's SpaceX Starlink has gone mainstream. Let's go check it out. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today, we have a little bit of fireside. Getting to the end of it. Sad, sad. That smokiness guy is so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee. Hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day. We're going to be talking about Elon Musk, SpaceX, Starlink, and the Generation 4. We can now get the Generation 4, but instead of only a few people here and there getting it, well, now everyone can get the Generation 4. That means if you're business class, residential, or Rome, you're going to be able to get the Generation 4. Now, that's number one. The other thing that happened that is really big is we're seeing them now in Best Buy. In the past, we've seen them at Costco as well as Walmart, a few other places, but now Best Buy is going to get them. I was reading an article over on Starlink Insider. It was good information. It just talked about it a little bit. And then I read about two or three other articles. I want to share some of these with you and then give you my thoughts on it. I think that this is really good news for everyone, but I just want you guys to be aware of the difference between the version three or the generation three and the new generation four and the recalls that happened and what they did about it and all of the rest of the stuff. So this way you are educated and you know exactly what you're getting. I've been doing this for 28 months now. All right, so let's get right into this article. It starts out by saying SpaceX satellite internet service Starlink has taken a significant step forward by making the version four or generation four terminal the exclusive option for customers in the United States, phasing out the older standard actuated dish model. Now, the idea of phasing out the actuated model might not sit well with all of you guys, but it continues. Previously, the next generation version 4 terminal was available only to a select group of Starlink customers, including those on the roaming and business plans and certain residential subscribers. It was just like handpicked. A few people were able to get them. Now it has been made accessible to all tiers within the United States, signaling a major shift in Starlink hardware strategy. And that is absolutely the case. Things are turning around. We are not having the option anymore. You're only going to be able to get this one moving forward. Good, bad, or indifferent. The introduction of the version 4 model also came with the redesign of the order page, which now looks as follows. And he brings this up. Now, bear in mind, there is two different pages that you see here. The first page is what it looks like to me or you in the United States, the new page. And the old page that he has here, well, that's the way it looks overseas still. It continues by saying, meanwhile, the rest of us folks not living in the US are still greeted by the previous page featuring the version three standard actuated antenna, just like I just said. The version four terminal, which lacks the built-in motors found in the previous models for automatic alignment requires manual setup. I did a whole video, maybe I'll put a link over here on how you set up this brand new version. Check that out when you're done watching this video. Also, if you want more Starlink content, check out my Starlink playlist. Maybe I'll also put a link over here. There's about 240, 241 videos so far in the last 27 months. Helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to buy, what not to buy, why. So check those out when you're done watching this video. Despite this, it has been praised for its ability to deliver consistently higher internet speeds. It also features a Wi-Fi 6 router, which significantly expands wireless coverage within your home, addressing a key need for broader and more reliable connectivity. In addition to its advanced features, the version 4 terminal's design reflects a shift towards greater durability and portability. Without Without the complexity of motorized components, the terminal is less susceptible to mechanical failure, making it a more robust option for the diverse environment Starlink serves. Moreover, the version 4 streamlined setup process aligns with SpaceX's goal to simplify the user experience, making satellite internet more accessible to people without technical expertise. 
Despite the discontinuation of the standard actuated dish in the United States, SpaceX ensures ongoing support for users of this model, including replacement parts and service continuity. Now, he has a little portion of the site that he is looking at that talks a little bit about this. It says, at this time, the Starlink standard kit is available to all customers within the United States, available to residential, Rome, and business customers. Note, Starlink Standard Actuated is no longer available as an option for purchase in the Starlink shop for customers in the United States. Replacements for the Starlink Actuated Kit will continue to be supported at this time. Now it finalizes with the Starlink Standard Kit will become available to additional service plans and markets over time. However, we do not have an estimated date to provide at this time. Stay tuned for updates on a wider release of the Starlink Standard Kit and other products. Now that is because he's looking at this web page from overseas. If he was looking at it from the United States, it most likely wouldn't say that because that is old information. Now it is available to everyone in the US. This is now, for them, they are getting the version three, which is the actuated version still in his location. I believe that was like Munich, Germany. Anyways, now I was reading another article that talked about Best Buy a little bit, and I wanna bring this to your attention also, because if you have a Best Buy near you, well, you could get SpaceX Starlink today. <laughs> So, or as soon as they get their supplies, it should be today or tomorrow. I mean, literally that quick. Whereas for me, it took me nine months of being on a waiting list before I was able to actually obtain SpaceX Starlink. You guys have it easy. <laughs> Anyways, it states this, SpaceX has broadened its retail strategy by partnering with Best Buy to sell its latest Starlink dish, offering consumers an alternative purchasing option for the satellite internet hardware. The next generation standard Starlink dish, version four or V4, is available for $599 US. This matches the cost of the official Starlink store and offers expedited delivery with orders potentially arriving as soon as the next Next day. Like I said, you can order this literally from Best Buy or you could go onto your local Best Buy and if they have one in stock, you can have them either deliver it directly to you or you could go and pick it up, which is amazing, absolutely amazing. This retail expansion could significantly boost SpaceX's sales of Starlink units. As the official Starlink website previously limited the availability of the version four dish to residential subscribers in select areas of the United States, this is no longer the case with residential Rome and business customers who will receive the generation four kit moving forward. Once again, generation four is it. That is all that you're going to get if you order as of today, Starlink period in the United States. Overseas, you will still be getting the generation three for a little while. Best Buy also sells Starlink accessories such as replacement cables, Ethernet adapters, mounts, and more, allowing subscribers to easily purchase peripherals without relying on the official Starlink store. That's awesome. They also carry the Tesla wall connectors. Now, they talked about the Ethernet adapters that they sell. Going forward, you're not going to need the Ethernet adapters anymore. This is for the older customers that have the version 2 dish or the version 3 dish. Version 4 no longer needs that Ethernet adapter. I talked about that in that video that I told you about earlier. So here's a couple of things that we need to make note of. Number one, yes, you're going to get a generation four in the United States going forward, period. And once again, you're going to get a generation four going forward in other parts of the world, but it's going to take another month or two. They're probably working on the expansion of their facility. I think it's in Texas that makes these version four dish or a version four antennas or kits. And they're probably only have so many that they can make per day, per week, per month or whatever. So they're starting out with the United States and then they're probably gonna go abroad with it. Now, one of the things that I find interesting here is I was reporting on the recall on this generation four where the mount adapter or the pole adapter for it was literally just like a half inch thick and it would be very susceptible to breaking off at that location. So they made some fixes to it. But what I find amazing here is when that recall happened, so-called recall, anyone that got that mount or that mount adapter, they replaced it and a lot of people got like a month free just because of the inconvenience, but they fixed it 
literally within a week or two, a week or two. That means they did a full redesign, added a bolt, lengthened this, did that, all the rest of the stuff, and then went to production with it within a week. That is the difference between SpaceX Starlink, SpaceX in general, and other companies. They iterate so quickly and they innovate so often, but they iterate so quickly, it's unbelievable, unbelievable. So taking a recalled product, removing it off the market and replacing it within like two weeks is insane. That is amazing. Now, the other thing that we need to make note of here is the new version four does use more power, which I find interesting. So instead of the old 50 watts to like 75 watts on average, we're now seeing about 75 watts to 100 watts. So let's say like a 25% or so increase, maybe 25 to 50 watt increase in the amount of power that's used. Now I'm thinking this might have something to do with speeds, reliability, being able to cut through the clouds or cut through weather, that type of thing. More power is always awesome when we're talking about antennas in general. But bear in mind that if you're going to be using this in an RV or at a location where you do not have power and you need to go from DC to AC power, well, it's going to draw a little bit more off your battery, which doesn't, I'm sure, sit well with a lot of the people that are doing that roaming or using it remotely with a battery or with a solar panel. That being said, this is just the way it is. They are moving forward and moving forward simply means it's going to need more power. So maybe that once again has something to do with them getting higher speeds, more reliability. That's a possibility, like I said. And if that's the case, I will sacrifice 25 watts or 50 watts to get a better service, right? The other thing that you need to keep in mind here is the generation four does have Wi-Fi six in comparison to Wi-Fi five. It doesn't have Wi-Fi six E or Wi-Fi seven, but it does have Wi-Fi six. So it is more advanced. Where is it more advanced or what makes it more advanced? Well, Wi-Fi 6 basically gives you a couple of things, a couple of niceties, let's call it. Number one, you can have a better Wi-Fi signal, like a faster signal. So your speeds are going to be quicker through your Wi-Fi, your network right now don't get that confused with you're going faster speeds due to having wi-fi 6 from your dish no the speeds are faster because of the antenna it has nothing to do with wi-fi 6. wi-fi 6 is only for moving data internally to your mesh network or internally to your network through your lan Okay, bear that in mind. Also with Wi-Fi 6, it will support more simultaneous connections. So you could have more devices on your Starlink without seeing any type of degrading of the speed. No reduction in speed. So that is awesome. Also, you're gonna get better security because with Wi-Fi 6, you're going to get your WPA3 in comparison to WPA2. Once again, if you watch that video that I talked about earlier, you'll get more in-depth detail on that. Now also, it will provide a greater distance. So it will push the signal further. Wi-Fi 6 routers basically allow that signal to travel a little bit further through walls, let's say, a little bit better. Not by much. In my personal opinion is if you want to be able to reach the other side of your house, turn it into a mesh network. I did a whole video on mesh networks. Once again, that's in the 240 videos that I did. Now, the other thing that I do like about this generation four is you no longer need that adapter. Like I said earlier, you do not need to buy a dongle. You don't need to buy an ethernet adapter. The version one dish had a ethernet port built into it. Well, the version two, the generation two did not. They took it out. For you to get ethernet, you need to get this little dongle. 35 bucks, a pain in the ass, people didn't like it. Well, moving forward, now we're on generation four, you no longer need a dongle. You have two ethernet ports on that router. Matter of fact, the generation one had a PoE or a power over ethernet little brick that empowered the dish through the ethernet cable. Well, as of generation two and moving forward, that PoE adapter, let's call it, is built into the router itself. Once again, less externally 
to deal with. And that's the same thing that holds true with this generation four. The power that your dish is receiving is coming right from the internals of the router. Excellent. That's the way we like to see it. Now, once again, if you are an RVer, a camper, someone that's going to be roaming with this, you might not be very happy with having the extra power usage. Once again, 20 to 50 watts extra. It kind of is what it is. There's nothing that we can do about it. What I would like to see is the ability to run this off DC instead of having to use a converter, an inverter, to take your DC and then move it to AC. Because with most inverters, even the very expensive ones, you're gonna get a loss of about seven to maybe 15%. So I would like to see the ability to use DC or AC with the unit, but we don't see that as of yet. Maybe that's something that they're working on. There is workarounds. You can take the router completely out of the mix and now just simply use the dish. And I did a whole video on that where you just bypass the thing altogether. But as of right now, you're just going to have to pay the price of inverting going from DC to AC. Coming full circle, Elon Musk, SpaceX, Starlink is basically now ubiquitous. It is now mainstream. It is everywhere. If you want it, you can get it. And you can get the latest version. Now, the only thing that I think that there's a problem here with some folks out there, and that would be that this dish has to be oriented or set up manually. So if you have to install this at the top of your gable, at the very peak, the apex, let's say of your roof, all the way up, let's say two stories. Well, when you set it up, you don't want to have to go up there again to move the dish or to reposition it. Now, why do I say this? In the 27, 28 months that I've been doing this, ever since the very beginning, just coming out of beta, my dish has rotated from almost due north to northeast, and then finally a little bit more northeast, and now it's basically east, east-northeast. So it is very much so east. It has slowly migrated its way, moved its way to the east. Now, that was always automatic. SpaceX would simply download a new firmware to your device, reboot device, then it would reposition, reorient itself, and repoint itself. Going forward, if you need to repoint your dish, well, you're getting on the top of that two-story ladder to go and do it. Also, if you have a situation where your dish is on the top of a massive pole, let's say, at 20, 30 feet off the ground or higher, you're going to have to get up there to go and reposition it. Whereas if it had motors, it would just do it automatically, automagically. You don't have to do anything going forward, right? So there's a positive and negative to everything. I think the positives here outweigh the negatives. Now, if I am one of those people that have the dish on the top of the roof someplace or in an inaccessible location, I would say just stick with the generation three. Stick with the actuated version, the version that has the motors built in. But if not, if you want the faster speeds and you want the better Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi 6 over the Wi-Fi 5, you want the added security, yada, 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 well, then the generation four is for you. The only problem here is you're no longer going to be able to get a generation three moving forward. You would have to buy a used one on the open market somewhere because according to what they're saying and their website, they are no longer selling the generation three. We are moving 100% to generation four. So what say you? Are you excited about the move? What do you think? Are you upset about the move because you want an actuated version? I wanna hear once again from you down below. If you enjoy this content, as I always say, throw it a thumbs up. That would be very, very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. If you are, thank you so very much. I appreciate that. Click this little button over here so when I go live and when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And don't forget to pick up my books. They are free. Go to jcristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you just want to say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little button down here. Click on that. Give a dollar or two if you like. If not, that's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And finally, head over to my website, jcristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the many years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. Don't forget my teas and my merch. Pick something up. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all. Bye.